Now, a part of a growing European Union, new member states, of course, is the single market, of course, is movement of people and also values, but it's also very much about innovation and cooperation. We'll talk more about that. We're in Lithuania now speaking to Thomas Viscontas, Product Assurance Manager at Kongsberg Nanoavionics, talk about the future of space technology. Thomas, good to see you. Thanks for joining us here. Good to see you too, Sasha. So let's start with the genesis of, uh, if we already look at that, the first idea of nanosatellites out of Lithuania, that's uh, already a stellar concept, right? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how that began here in Vilnius. Well, it began quite some time ago. Uh, it should be about 10 years now since Nanoavionics has been uh, opened as a company. And the whole dream started about 2010-11-ish, uh, when a group of like-minded people decided they want to do something for NASA, at least a, a single screw, something that would uh, mark Lithuania as a spacefaring nation. Okay. And I think we've come quite a way of that. We see that here in the, in the background, really top-notch now satellites being produced right here in Vilnius. So um, let's look at bring it back down to earth, if you will, yeah. um, looking at how much Lithuania has benefited from European membership, how much did that contribute to this collaboration also with uh, Kongsberg and more things in terms of business? Tell us a bit more about that. Um, well, you know, sometimes I look at uh, how Lithuania has um, evolved over the t 20 years, uh, and I cannot believe that we're the, still the same country that we have been 20 years ago. So. It has been a, an amazing journey for the country itself, but also it has been an amazing journey for the you know, innovations and the ability to innovate. So, of course, this I don't think this would be possible without the integration or, or without the, the uh, open borders and the possibilities that they provide us. We, I don't think that we would be able to uh, innovate so much and to export to such markets as the United States, as the European market, and so, and so on. So I, I think that this has been an amazing jump from what we have been 20 years ago and now. And it's basically, in, in my view at least, it's all thanks to the European U Union. Mm -hmm. And I think with all those things that you said, it's also collaboration. Let's talk about more about the technology itself. Yeah. So with nanosatellites, some people won't know what that is. Walk us through on some of that application in terms of where that's used right now. Mm -hmm. So nanosatellite is basically a satellite which is very small. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's built from components you can buy usually off the shelf. So it's not specialized comp components. Uh, and a lot of know 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 how, but that makes the satellites really uh, competitive in terms of uh, lead times, and in terms of uh, expenses. So anyone looking f to buy nano satellite uh, should expect to pay tens and hundreds of times less than they would have uh, buying the classical satellites. Mm -hmm. Uh, basically, nanosatellites and microsatellites are flying much lower than the conventional satellites that you ima Im imagine, like, let's say, G GPS ones. Uh, and they take uh, a really short time to make. So 12 months to 24 months to 36 months, depending on the size and the complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the parts can be standardized. Uh, so that means uh, that, that you don't have to innovate every single time and you can reuse the parts that you have made before. So there's a sustainability aspect to it. Uh, there's a sustainability aspect, of course. There's a, all, also a um, cost tax aspect to it because uh, you can make the, the same design of uh, subsystems at least for every customer and then you can configure it in. In, in, inside that, that means that, that ev everybody saves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, I think, you know, if we're looking at, maybe you can reveal some of those, maybe not direct customers, but those industries. I and mean, we're looking at uh, maybe telecommunications. I mean, we're yeah. looking at maybe defense. Where, where is this applicable? So you mentioned two classical examples, communications, uh, defense, then earth ob observation. So various uh, applications here from uh, observing the oceans, uh, like the uh, quality of algae and so on, 
uh, to observing uh, ports of like ships ships coming in and 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 out uh, to observing uh, fields uh, and and deciding when to take the uh, fruits because they have been ripened so earth observation is is is, is a very big thing uh, some other scientific applications uh, so it could be a variety of things but i would say the majority of customers right now are in the uh, communications and defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's also key here and also with, with Kongsberg out of Norway. Um, how much has that collaboration uh, changed things here? I mean, is there, do you see more uh, partnerships uh, across Europe? Do you see more attention internationally? What is that? Because it's also an interesting one from the Nordics yeah. all the way here yeah. into the Baltics. Tell us a bit more. Yeah, well, Kongsberg is a 200-year-old defense company. Uh, so obviously, uh, being part of Kongsberg means that we have much broader uh, uh, capabilities to access markets. Uh, having their name on the company is, is, is allowing us to, to open up some doors that, haven't been with, that we haven't been able to open before. Uh, but also, Kongsberg allows us to use uh, some part of their capacities or know-how and so on. So this integration, I personally see as beneficial for, for bo both of us, but for nanoavionics especially, it's just like opening stuff up. Mm -hmm. All right. And I think also, you know, some people will watch and be really surprised and amazed that these kind of technologies are coming out of Lithuania. Uh, I think it's not the first thing that people assume when they think of uh, Lithuania and the Baltic states. But I think that's also that surprise. But I think it's also because of people. Uh, and tell, tell me a bit more about how, over these years, through your own journey, how like, talent and people have played a big role in all this development here in Lithuania and nanosatellites. Yeah, so when I joined nanoavionics first time, it was 2019. Uh, and it was just a very small company of like 25 people. And then we managed to attract more than 250 employees. Uh, now I think we have 270 something. Mm -hmm. uh, so most of them are Lithuanian. Uh, and the funny thing, or not the funny, but ironic thing is that we don't have any aerospace uh, engineering uh, trainings or programs in the uni universities that would be efficient. Uh, we have launched some. But they still are not mature to produce ready-made and en en engineers. So we started hiring people who are really smart, who know mechanical engineering, who know electronical uh, electronical engineering, and teaching them the ways of air of aerospace. Mm -hmm. So that uh, this example only shows that that Lithuanian people are really savvy mm -hmm. and can really transform themselves from just a regular engineer to an aerospace en en engineer in a pretty short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And also, let's look at collectively, I mean, where do you see this? I mean, now Lithuania being part of the European Union, being part of NATO, also really important. So what do you look forward to now being here in this, this country because of all those things for the next 20 years? Well, personally, I expect uh, even more integration, uh, even more growth, uh, because we have been like the Baltic states overall have been really probably the fast growing post Soviet nations uh, and probably the fastest growing uh, uh, joiners of the EU as well. If we look at Romania or other countries, I don't think that in terms of G GDP we have been surpassed. So I expect that we will become some sort of like Lithuanian Singapore, uh, European Sing Sing Singapore, or something like like that. That a really small country which uh, has shown that with in innovation and with the opening up of the economy, we can reach a lot. Mm -hmm. So I see uh, us really going into space in terms of this. Like growth and economy and everything. Yeah. So as they say, like reaching for the for the sky, quite literally, yeah. I think. For, yeah, literally. For you guys. Yeah. Not just with these yeah. things. But I think also very much because of what's been possible together through European membership. I, I think. Right? Yeah, it's of possible. course, one hundred percent. European. Uh, this was my first vote actually. Uh, when we voted for the European Union, I was, I, was eighteen 
already and this was my first voting experience so I have of course vo voted yes and I never looked looked back yeah. and always looking up into the sky of into the course. universe good stuff thank you so much Thomas, for all that really appreciate it thank you Sasha thank you and that was this interview and my name is Sasha Farbach for TVP World in Vilnius Lithuania